Hi class, my name is John Bakshi. I'm a graduate student taking environmental pollution, CHE 575, and today my presentation will be covering wastewater energy, sludge, and nutrients. Here's a cool little illustration of the process of wastewater and sludge waste treatment, uh, again, the processes, consisting of your waste assessment and treatment, followed by your waste processing, and then eventual for market development and commercialization, which will be covered in the ensuing slides. So here in the table of contents, uh, it covers a general overview of what the presentation will cover starting with your introduction where I cover renewable energy, sludge waste, and wastewater treatment processes, followed by these three chapters that are covered in the text, chapter eight involving the biodiesel production from wastewater using oleaginous yeast and microalgae, chapter nine covers the utilization of sludge as fertilizer in agriculture, and chapter 10 covers the energy and resource recovery from sludge, highlighting the different methods and types that are used to produce these different types of uh, bioproductions. Uh, and then finally, we'll, of course, we'll summarize uh, the presentation. So the introduction, renewable energy is intensively developing to replace fossil fuels. Again, the positive features are that it provides cleaner energy and lower emissions. Of course, we want to lower our carbon footprint for the future as well. Oil-based fuels and fossil fuels are unsustainable due to depleting resources. And actually, this transitions us into a, a concept called peak oil, which is the eventual an anticipated depletion of uh, oil reserves in the next three or four decades. Uh, wastewater is a key component of resource and energy generation vital to our everyday lives and energy and resource recovery from, from sludge is another key component uh, from wastewater treatment. Um, here is, actual an, is actually an aerial image of a typical sludge waste treatment facility. Uh, of course, there are many different types of facilities as well. Here we'll be looking at some of the advantages and disadvantages of wastewater as energy. Of course, the pros, as we mentioned, it's a clean source, it's recyclable, uh, it's abundant and sustainable. And of course, lowers our carbon footprint due to the reduced uh, carbon dioxide emissions over time and it will not increase in cost as an energy source so again this is the concept of supply and demand if resources are depleted over time of course the cost will be increased well because this is a sustainable resource very abundant the cost should remain the same if not decrease over time some of the cons unfortunately it's expensive high operation maintenance costs they're not as efficient not as efficient as fossil fuels can still cause pollutions due to these facilities constantly Pu uh, pumping out emissions and of course geographical limitations as well. So wastewater energy, despite the immediate upfront, upfront costs to produce wastewater treatment and, er and energy facilities, the long-term benefit in terms of the technological advances and the abundance of these resources will continue to play a heavy role in the positive outlook of these wastewater uh, methods. So of course becoming a fast-growing global investment technology in energy and the US congressional budget, which is a pretty cool fact here, uh, estimated between 13 and 20 billion uh, dollars are used to invest in wastewater treatment tech between the years of 2000 and 2019. And sludge, a byproduct of wastewater treatment, is a great source of energy and resource that can, tr can contribute to energy generation and again is the core resource to producing a lot of these uh, products. So wastewater energy, it's an essential and critical infrastructure needed to support our modern lives. Uh, the recycling for the production of key resources involving water and sludge, which are the main uh, topics that we'll be covering in this presentation, as well as energy produ uh, production consisting of your biogas, biofuels, such as hydrogen, syngas, bio oils, and biodiesel. And wastewater and sludge contain key nutrients. As mentioned, they're key resources and catalysts in producing these products over time. So this illustration, another pretty cool one, um, shows the general process of uh, the occurrence so again, beginning with your sludge from wastewater, this is where the wastewater treatment occurs. And then it goes through a variety of processes, your thermal hydrolysis and your anaerobic digestions. And then over time, as you can see, some of these products are, are, are produced, but you've got your biogas, natural gas, and as well as many others that we'll be covering in the presentation. So biodiesel production from wastewater, uh, biofuels or biomass materials, again, plant-based plant, plant -based materials, uh, which convert uh, agricultural residues. So again, we're using those products entirely and it's converted into different types of liquid fuels. So biodiesel and ethanol are actually the two most common types of biofuels, which again, you can find these at your local gas stations. Many vehicles nowadays are actually designed to take these to again, lower emissions. And there are also a lot of different ethanol concentrations as well. Biodiesel is made from the transesterification of triglycerides. And these are a variety of different acids that are suitable for biodiesel production again naming palmitic and stearic acid, to name a couple. It's a cool little graphic. 
So the case study in chapter 8 of the text uh, covers, essentially, uh, experiments were conducted using the different wastewater that was produced uh, from a variety of different facilities consisting of your beer breweries, rice wine distilleries, milk candy facilities, biscuit factories, and domestic factories, and domestic wastewater in China. Um, and the experimental setup involved the mixed, um, the mixed culture of oleaginous yeast and microalgae. And essentially these, these samples were taken and were tested and COD levels were measured showing the different oxygen consumed by the reaction. So here, just a general overview of the results of that case study in chapter eight. Uh, the COD levels of domestic wastewater were much lower as expected than all the other samples that were collected. The highest COD was found in rice wine distilleries, followed by milk candy production, breweries were next, and then of course your domestic, uh, your domestic factories and your domestic wastewater rounded up the list. And lipid production was also analyzed uh, via the uh, via only agonous yeast um, with milk candy, rice wine distilleries and breweries being uh, the most suitable in this case study. So the utilization of sludge as manure, organic materials widely used as fertilizer in agriculture and it's actually the main byproduct of organic waste. So this organic waste goes through a process called coagulation flocculation which again we'll cover in more detail on the next slide. And this uh, waste treatment process allows for ecologically safe organic fertilizers to be used for agriculture as mentioned. So here are some uh, images. So again, we'll cover this very briefly. Uh, it originally begins with this. Again, this is just a small sample size of some negatively charged colloids in this coagulation slide. And then this next slide, you can see an alum or an aluminum sulfate is added to the sample. Here, the charges of the negatively charged colloids actually neutralize. In the next couple slides of the flocculation, these colloids begin to form and they conglomerate to form this sort of sample. And then in order to keep these conglomerated flock uh, stuck to, to, to keep them from dispersing, uh, a polymer is actually added. So these bunches uh, form and conglomerate and they stay and then they eventually settle in the sedimentation tank as, as can be seen here. They settled at the bottom and then this, these are actually ejected and then taken to your local sludge waste treatment facilities where the ensuing steps as we'll cover in the presentation will occur. So case study, the utilization of sludge in the chapter nine uh, of the text uh, highlights a, a facility called Santiago, which again, the samples consisted of 67% dry material and 25% moisture. So the steps utilized in this test consist of a preliminary test for disinfecting the sludge, and then two and three cover the complete pathogen microorganism and intestinal worm disinfection test of sludge, as well as an aluminum heavy metal detox test as well. So this test in this case study essentially concluded that technology used can be, can be used to completely disinfect municipal waste and eliminate the odor uh, that sludge produces as well. So energy and resource recovery from sludge. Waste sludge is a very useful substance as mentioned because it contains a lot of key nutrients and is again, a catalyst and core resource for these products. Renewable energy interests the spike due to improved technology and our transition to reduce global warming and promoting greener technologies, greener energy. And the two components in sludge that are economically feasible to recycle include your nitrogen and phosphorus, as well as your carbon or your energy. So this slide covers some of the methods and types of energy recovery, energy and resource recovery from waste sludge, including anaerobic digestion of sludge with biogas recovery, co-digestion incineration, pyrolysis gasification, supercritical oxidation, again, these go through a variety of different high pressure, high temperature reactions. The types of products that are produced are actually productions of biogas, biofuels as shown here, nutrient recovery, electricity generated using microbes and heavy metal recovery and construction materials. So these are your more physical, tangible sort of uh, resource recoveries. Um, the types of waste sludge, there are actually two main types. Primary sludge is produced through your, again, your your preliminary steps to your wastewater treatment processes consisting of your screening, your grit removal, and your sedimentation. And there's a, there's a secondary sludge as well, which is produced during the biological treatment of wastewater. So there are actually three different routes uh, that, are, that, that are used for recovery for waste sludge. So these are, you can kind of picture them as categories and then divide it into sub-methods, which, which are going to be covered in the following slides, consisting of your biochemical, thermochemical, and mechanical chemical. Uh, route recoveries. 
So here is just a very nice little chart that highlights, uh, again, these routes at the top line, your biochemical, thermochemical, and mechanical, and then you've got your methods that were highlighted in the previous slide, as well as your products that form uh, as a result of these. So again, these typically, so as an example, thermochemical typically occurs at, with your higher pressure and higher temperature resources. Taking us to our next slide, methods for energy and resource recovery. This is a general overview of the different types of methods as highlighted. Again, we'll go over this very briefly. Anaerobic digestion, which is your most popular type of sludge stabilization technology. This essentially takes organic solids and converts them to biogas, and it's used as heat and electricity. Incineration, which is the complete oxidation of organic compounds, and this essentially takes biosolids and they're burned uh, to form ash. Gasification, which is the breakdown of sludge, uh, dried sludge at high temperatures with a reduction in oxygen gas. And the products are heat and syngas in this case. Pyrolysis, which takes sludge and energy thermally and treats it under pressure. And it produces these different products here. Wet oxidation is a chemical oxidation of sludge at high temps and pressures. And hydrothermal treatment, which takes sludge and heats it at between 150 and 450 degrees Celsius with an absence of oxygen gas. And the products are amino and fatty acids as well as fiber material. Biogas. Uh, as an energy recovery type. So here it's produced through the anaerobic digestion of sewage sludge and contains this composition here, 60 to 70 percent approximately of methane and 30 to 40 percent of these different compounds here consisting of your carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen gas, as well as your hydrogen sulfate and water vapor. Methane gas is generally anaerobically and is the main source of energy at wastewater treatment facilities. And recovered methane is actually used to power gas engines and produce electric and thermal energy at these. So again, this is a very self-sustainable, self-efficient sort of process here. So there are also several pretreatment technologies already available on the market, consisting of these here. And biogas is actually an excellent alternative to fossil fuels. Uh, it's used for the production, as mentioned, of heat, steam, and electric generators, as well as the production of uh, various chemicals as well. Here we'll cover some of the nutrient heavy metal reco uh, resource recoveries. Nutrient recovery contains many key and useful re uh, nutrients, and it's the breakdown and solubilization of sludge biomass and the conversion of ammonia and phosphate, uh, producing central fertilizers, as mentioned, for agriculture. Phosphorus recovery is actually one of the key types of sludge, uh, of, of, of sludge waste treatment. And the only downside is that the cost of production is very high, but with improved technology, these costs can reduce. Heavy metal recovery, uh, metals such as, I'll name a few, zinc, copper, lead, and cadmium. Uh, restrict the use of sludge for land application. Um, again, this is to reduce the potential harm that can cause, uh, again, detriments in human and animal health. Uh, and there's also no secondary pollution via ultrasonication assisted acid leaching. Uh, and again, this offers for better separation, recovery efficiency, lower recovery costs, and it's a great end product and lowers emissions. Biofuel. Okay, and this again is another potentially to replace non-renewable petroleum fuels. Uh, research on alternative biofuels uh, consists of biofuel, bioethanols, biodiesels, as well as a variety of others as shown here. And taking a look at this illustration here, you can see some of these plant-based plant, plant -based materials like your sugar, starch, and your cellulose that are used to cover, that are used to uh, convert to your different types of liquid, liquid fuels that we pump into our vehicles. And again, with improved technology, these will be a lot more uh, viable options in the future. Uh, again, it being biodegradable, again, is another positive to our, uh, for our environment. Benefits of biofuel, very cheap, plentiful, and recyclable. Again, we're using all of that product there. Types of biofuels, we have hydrogen, bio oil, some gas, and biodiesel. Again, we'll generally cover these. Uh, alternative energy to fossil fuel, again, we've got these emerging hydrogen fuel cell technology vehicles on the market, much higher hydrogen gas percentage that are produced from wet versus dry sludge. Syngas, which is a mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen and it's used in it as an ingredient to produce other liquid fuels such as synthetic diesel and methanol. Biodiesel, alkanes and alkenes compo components are refined to create high quality hydrocarbon fuels and biodiesel. Positives are safer in storage and handling as well as it's the esters of simple alkyl fatty acids from production of lip lipid sources. So these are your more physical tangible uh, products here as in terms of resource recovery from waste sludge. Uh, consisting of your construction materials. So again, these are produced at higher temperatures in order to keep the structural integrity of say your bricks, your pumice, uh, your different types of aggregates and slags. Uh, again, these are done at uh, high temperatures around 1000 degrees Celsius. 
electricity production from sludge. Um, again, this it relates to the fuel cell uh, technology, it's the decomposition of organic substrate. Um, it has a role in fuel cell technology as mentioned. Bioplastic, again, the benefits of these biodegradable, so again, great for our environment. And the only downside is the carbon, cost of carbon sources are very high, resulting in slow growth of, growth of this industry. And biofertilizers were covered in the previous slide. Again, sludge waste is used as a fertilizer in our agriculture. Uh, in summary, wastewater and sludge waste treatment has a very bright future in our in the, in the renewable energy sector. Again, lower emissions, abundant, recyclable, and sustainable for our future, lowering our carbon footprint. Major issues are the high manufacturing costs, operation maintenance costs, of course, but again, with improved technology, these costs will definitely go down. And long-term effect with improving technology, high value products will increase profitability. And again, green energy is always the future. Thank you.